Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another amazing video. A lot of you guys wanted me to react to this, actually. It's Deutschland by Rammstein and Analysis. I've reacted to the song before, but I've never actually reacted to the breakdown. Several people in the comment section two years ago tried to explain to me um, what the meaning of it was. Um, actually, it's, it, it would be three years ago uh, to this day. Um, that the the song got released. So um, before we get started, make sure you guys go ahead and do yourselves a favor and subscribe to the channel. We are trying to hit 500,000 subscribers this year, and hopefully we can do that with the help of you guys. We're going to be watching this, checking it out. I'm going to have a lot of questions. The original link, as always, will always be in the top of the description down below if anybody wants to watch this um, before you guys see my um, uh, reaction on this video. But let's not waste any time. Let's check this thing out and see exactly what we're working with about a very controversial piece of media that was released by one of Germany's most successful cultural exports a couple of months ago. Of course, I'm talking about the band which single-handedly taught the world the German words Du hast, du hast. Rammstein. In the yep. wake of the band releasing a snippet of their music video for the song Deutschland or Germany, mm -hmm. there has been quite a lot of condemnation held in that direction. German rock band sparks outrage over tasteless video ref uh, referencing Holocaust. That's what was happening. So I remember when this video dropped, it had a mass amount of dislikes when dislikes were a thing. Um, it had like more likes than dislikes, but I remember it being somewhere along the lines of like if it had 100,000 likes, um, the hour it dropped, it had probably like 70,000 dislikes, which is a really bad like to dislike ratio, you know? Um, but I was wondering why, and I think it's because they put Holocaust references in there and whatnot. But my 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 opinion before going into this video is I feel like Deutschland was a tell all of the entirety of Germany's history, the good, the bad, the ugly, and accepting Germany for what it is and what it has become and what it once was. Um and all the um the 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 the, the big points in history that made Germany what it is today. And I feel like a lot of people were outraged because they're like, this shouldn't even be in your video. Like, why are you talking about this? We're over it. Um, we move past that. Boom. So um, it's almost like Rammstein was hand delivering the 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 um, the imagery to people in their face. Like, this is Germany: the good, the bad, the ugly. And a lot of people had a lot to say about that. If you guys disagree with my opinion, please let me know in the comments down below. And um, let's get into this video. An Israeli ambassador calling it shameful and demanding immediate removal. Mm -hmm. Former head of Germany's Jewish Council said the band was exploiting the suffering and murder of millions for entertainment purposes. And the government's commissioner for anti-Semitism said the band had crossed the red line. Despite that, the song immediately became a number one hit yep. and its music video is close to 80 million clicks on YouTube. Yep. So let's talk about it and maybe we can make sense of it all as we go through the video and decipher what's shown, what it might mean, and at the end, we'll talk about if this reaction is warranted. But please, while you're watching this, keep in mind that everything I say in this video is completely right, uncontroversial, and not up for argument. The video opens showing Roman soldiers walking through a forest with the title card reading Germania Magna, which was the Roman term for the region in North Central Europe and home of the Germanic tribes. Hmm. We see the soldiers walking up to a tree which has several bodies hanging from its branches oh, and encountering a black woman cutting off the head of another Roman soldier. At first, I thought this scene was a depiction of the Battle of Teutoburg Forest, Forest yeah. when the Romans sought to bring the regions that would later become Germany under their control. They suffered a disastrous blow at the hands of Arminius, who was taken from his tribe as a little boy, received Roman military training, I didn't even but know later that. returned to Germania Magna, uniting previously hostile Germanic tribes against the Romans. Jesus. Obviously, an immensely important point in German history, there are a bunch of memorials dedicated to Arminius, and this historical moment is often seen as the birth of the German people. I think that is something I might make another video, a separate video on Ar Arminius. I had no idea of the t of the story of Arminius and that there were, I did see that there were statues of him, but I did not know the s historical significance behind that. I also did know about the to the Battle of Teutoburg Forest. Of course, there's several videos I've reacted to, and um, I've had discussions with different people about this before, um, and it, it's, it's very interesting. I want to dive on a deeper basis as far as like the, the, the like ancient German history and stuff and get into that, because that to me is 
is becoming more and more interesting the more I find out via these videos. It's pretty crazy. Besides the thick forest, another indicator that this scene is referencing this battle are the Roman soldiers hanging from the trees. Because mm. legend has it that after the battle, a Roman was hung from or nailed to every tree in the Teutoburg Jesus. forest. And while this battle might be an influence, the year 16 AD doesn't quite fit, so it might also show the campaigns of Germanicus, who sought to bring the region under Rome's control from 14 AD to 16 AD. Jesus. But since these campaigns also failed, the takeaway pretty much remains the same, namely the uprising of the Germanic people against the Romans. The black woman the Roman soldiers encounter is not supposed to represent a literal person in the context of the video, but is supposed to serve as the personification of Germany it which, which, itself. That's exactly what people were saying in the comments. They're saying that the black woman in the video was actually a personification of Germany itself, which actually in turn indirectly pissed off so many people watching the video. And I'm like, oh my God, this is intense. She takes on the role of Germania, which has been the stand-in for Germany for hundreds of years. Some of you might be wondering why Germania, the personification of Germany, is portrayed by a black woman, which are a minority of Germans. Mm -hmm. Well, trust me when I say it will become clear when we look at the lyrics in a couple of minutes. Interesting. Oh, and that's why they chose that. Next historical setting is some sort of cellar in which two guys are beating the hell out of one another with brass knuckles. Yes. Judging from the clothes and hairstyles, I think it's safe to say this is supposed to be set during the Weimar years. The setting specifically might speak to the large amount of violence in this period and the whole scene resembles the dance on the volcano image we have of the Weimar years as a period of swing and cultural progress on one side and social upheaval and violence on the other. Oh my gosh. Now, violent political clashes weren't unusual even before that period, but in the 1920s it took on a whole new quality. Oh my For gosh. instance, in 1920 a group of reactionaries executed a successful coup in Germany's capital and seize control of the parliament. Oh my gosh. While this coup only lasted 100 hours in total due to a nationwide general strike, it kicked off a chain of violence much more grim than your average political altercation. Oh my gosh. As a response to this coup, something called the Ruhr Red Army had risen up in West Germany, but after the initial right-wing coup was defeated by the general strike, this army's goal shifted to revolution. What followed was the now reinstated government sending in armed force to put down this rebellion with over 2,000 Germans being killed in the process. Jeez, and not I did just not due know to that. fighting, but mass executions afterwards. What? What the heck? I didn't even know about this. What the? Dude, there's so much, there's so much digging I have to do after this video. It's insane. I did not know anything about that at all either. There's a lot more. There's so much to unpack in that video. I think that Deutschland video was, what, nine minutes long? Like, it was between six and nine minutes long. I'm pretty sure it was nine minutes long. Do you remember it being incredibly like, long? And it had a lot of things packed into it. And after, you know, learning so much about Germany and then watching this video itself, it is literally opening up my third eye to what's actually been, uh, what was actually going on in that video. And um, even the people that were explaining what was happening in the comment section, they were letting me know, like, hey, dude, like, this is what's going on um, on several front fronts and whatnot. So this is pretty crazy. I love I love this gentleman's breakdown of this video so far. It's, 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 it's This impressive. kind of violence is much better described as regional civil wars than just violent clashes between opposing sides. As Mark Jones writes in his book, Founding Weimar, Violence in the German Revolution 1918-1919, at this stage of history, violence was politics and politics was violence. Jesus. Any attempt to present That's the two as separate... the two things you do not want to talk about, it'll spark up a, 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 a very physical, um, aggressive altercation um, quickly, it is religion and politics. People to this day are very passionate about that. Of course, m more people are... I guess more reasonable when talking about that than they were in the past, but it's still a thing. Like you got to be careful when talking about that with people, man. They they don't play. For historical chapters, would misjudge the basic character of this epoch. The violent clashes defining Germany's interwar period, especially early on, didn't just involve fists or milkshakes. Oh my it involved gosh. machine guns, it involved artillery and mass executions. Jesus. In fact, the first bomb dropped onto Berlin wasn't dropped by the Allies in World War II, but during the Berlin March fights in 1919 by government forces fighting revolutionaries. What? This scene communicates a level of political violence that would very much shape Germany's way forward. 
Next up we have an office with the band being dressed as party higher ups of the SED regime during East Germany's time as a socialist dictatorship. Oh my God. The lead singer is dressed up as Erich Honecker in his time general secretary for the central committee of the socialist unity party. Later in the video we see them partying, popping champagne bottles and generally acting very unrestrained. And this imagery is quite common in artistic portrayals of East Germany's ruling party. The DDR was, from beginning to end, plagued by a lack of consumer goods, like toilet paper for oh instance, which was notoriously scarce. Heating material in the winter. Damn, I thought it was just during the pandemic that we just had. Because, man, the first thing everybody went for was the, uh, the toilet paper and then hand sanitizer and stuff like that. I didn't know that was a thing back then. I wonder why there was such a lack of toilet paper in this period of time specifically why that that's like one of the most random things to not have like to drinks in the summer and so on partially this was due to reasons out of the ruling party's influence like having less trading partners available than their western counterpart but also due to sheer incompetence or political decisions like prioritizing heavy industry over the production of consumer goods. Right. In 1958, the party even started a program titled A Thousand Little Things, promising to deliver all the stuff that was lacking, like can openers, razor blades, you know, all those little things. Right. The stated long-term goal of these programs was to raise living standards to a level that would eventually exceed living standards in Western Germany. Oh While gosh. this goal specifically was never met, there were ways to get around the problem of lacking consumer goods. One of these ways was to rise through the ranks of the ruling party, which came with a lot of benefits, like a greater variety of food being available to you, or skipping ahead in waiting lists to get a car. Portraying the ruling party of the DDR in this way is often used to show the hypocrisy of a leadership chastising the West for perpetuating an unjust class system, while at the same time disregarding the notion of equality when it came to themselves. The members of the band all grew up in East Germany and lived under this regime, so that might explain- I did not know that at all. They're all from East Germany. This is deep. Also, I wonder how long it took for them to put this all together. Like they have all, all of their songs have very deep meanings, but this one in particular might be their deepest song in my personal opinion. If you disagree with me, please let me know in the comments down below. What do you think is the most powerful song that Rammstein's ever released? I think Deutschland, in my opinion, was the most powerful song they've ever released easily. And why they not only included this imagery in their video, but also include this set of lyrics in the song. You have cried a lot, separated in mind, united in heart. Most likely a reference to Germany's forceful separation and the suffering connected to it. Jesus. Lots of people couldn't see their family members anymore or Damn. were murdered attempting to flee the East. That's in their sucks. song Radio from the same album, they are even more explicit in their critique of the DDR and the song revolves around censorship and escaping a largely closed off society via oh, yeah. the radio with which you were able to catch signals from the West. Yes. And while we're on the topic of East Germany, there's a shot later in the video showing riot police sitting on a tank in front of a giant Karl Marx head. And in case you don't know, this head exists in real life in the city of Chemnitz, formerly known as Karl Marx City. What? The tank and the riot police are supposed to reference in combination with this monument is open to interpretation, but one possible event might be the East German Uprising of 1953. As a response to a race in work quotas, which basically means more work for the same salary. Wow, and is that what uh is, is that what they call nationalism or or not is, is that nationalism? Or communism is that what the communism thing is so they increase the amount of work you had to do for the same pay right everybody got paid the same so if you were someone who was like a, a door guard to the person who needed to work in the coal mines you guys all got paid the exact same you know um and people were pissed so they probably tried to fight back and the people in the east which is so crazy it's so, there's so much to unpack because think about it if you tried to protest against the government that was ruling you in the east, they would quite literally take you out of the world. They would like they would end your living existence, right? And then proceed to tell the outside world that their society was so good that they that that you know they were closing it off so that nobody else could interfere with their society while it was quite literally crumbling from within. It's so crazy. Like West Germany was succeeding because it had all this help from all the other, from, you know, us, like the, from all the allied powers and stuff like that. Um, the Axis powers, you know, that eventually got control of um, Eastern Germany and stuff like that were fumbling the economy hard and they weren't letting anybody leave. They're like, this is our section of Germany. We're keeping it. We're going to run it the way we want to run it. 
even if we run it into the ground. And people in the East were seeing how much better people in the West were living and how much more job opportunities were over there. And they had relatives over there and everything too. And they tried to escape, didn't work. They're like, okay, well, let's, let's try to make a living here. It's damn near impossible to work for a living without being worked to death, quite literally. It's it's scary, bro. That shit, it must have been so terrifying. Construction workers went on a strike, not only demanding to drop the quotas, but broad democratization and political freedoms. Yes. As more and more workers joined the protests, the government decided to deal with these demands by violently suppressing the yes, uprising. Yes, that's what I'm saying, Turning to the Soviet yeah. Union for military aid. Soviet tanks were deployed, military and police opened fire on protesters, and dozens of Bro, were imagine that. Yeah. Imagine that. That's what I just said. Imagine that. Trying to, like voice your your discomfort and uh, with, with with what's going on with how everybody's treating um what's happening like it makes no sense what he just said your be uh, the, the demand for work is going up and they're increasing how much work you have to do to get the same salary you were already getting right and the amount of labor everybody did across the board differed but in general they increased all of the work you had to do to earn the same amount of money you were earning prior. That makes zero sense. That's like getting more responsibility in the job that you have right now, becoming a manager and not getting a pay raise. But you now are responsible for a lot of other people. If anything, that encourages low quality work because nobody wants to do the work anymore because they're not getting paid what they're what they're owed right like that's terrible bro next up we have to ban being led through a prison while receiving physical abuse and money raining down from the ceiling and while the scene takes place in a former ddr prison the clothes of the inmates and germania being dressed in what seems like a parade uniform of the garde dragona regiment alludes to the early weimar years again ah. up until 1923 incarceration and the treatment you received in the criminal justice system were supposed to serve deterrence under mm. the new social democratic government this changed and physical abuse as well as confinement in a darkened cell were abolished the concept of resocialization didn't really seep through to the actual prison guards and the abuse of inmates continued throughout the Weimar years. Damn. 1923 was also the year of the hyperinflation, which might be referenced by all this cash raining down. Uh. Inflation was already quite rampant in the German Empire since you can't really fight a world war with pocket change. True. But when it really hit the fan was when French and Belgian forces occupied parts of the Ruhr area due to Germany's inability to pay demanded reparations. Damn, they're like, you're going to get some of this land then. The sudden occupation outraged the German public and the country's leadership called for passive resistance. Workers in the area went on a general strike and did everything possible to sabotage the efforts of the occupiers. Wow. But those workers still had to be paid, True. which the German government couldn't, so they created even more money out of nothing, which led the inflation to explode. By the end of the That's year... That's insane. Bro, this is so deep. This is so deep. This is so deep. So get this, right? Because Germany was not able to pay their reparations and stuff, you know, France and Belgium, they're like, all right, well, looks like we're taking parts of Germany then. Boom. Like they're occupying the space. The public of Germany, they're like, bro, what the heck? This isn't cool. We're not cool with this. Shit. Like we don't even have any money. We can't pay you because we don't have any money. So they're like, you know what? Fine. We're going to sabotage everything. So you want to leave, you know, but they have to get paid. You know, if, even though they were sabotaging and they were still working, they still had to get paid somehow. So they printed fake money or I mean, it wasn't fake money. It was real money, but like it had no value because they were a, Germany at that time was a country that was in severe debt. And so the weight of their dollar was nothing. And so every the cost of everything in the country went through the roof inflation right a candy bar probably went from like six dollars to twenty dollars you know everything so it doesn't matter how much money you print the more money you print the less value it holds especially if the country that is printing that money all that money owes all that money like you know to, to, to other countries bro it's crazy yeah people had to carry their money in wheelbarrows when wow. going to the store because a single egg for instance cost 320 billion reismark hear that 320 billion reismark bro what 320 billion for one egg oh 
Oh my God. A very scary time, as you can imagine. Yes. Here's how the German correspondent of the British Daily Mail described the situation. And luckily, I could avoid faking a British accent for this quote. In the shops, the prices are typewritten and posted hourly. For instance, a gramophone at 10 a.m. was 5 million marks, but at 3 p.m. it was 12 million marks. What? A copy of the Daily Mail purchased... That's extreme inflation. ...on the street yesterday cost 35,000 marks, but today it costs 60... Jesus! Marks. It got so bad that if you were to sit down in a cafe and order a coffee, while you were sitting there, the price for that coffee might have gone up from 5,000 to 8,000 marks. Bro! Inflation was so bad, it was like day trading in the stock market, but literally it was everything. So POV, you're at that, like you're alive at that time. Inflation's going on. You go to the supermarket to buy um, milk, right? Two minutes ago, that milk would have been 2,000 marks. Two minutes later, that same gallon of milk is now 10,000 marks. 10,000 marks. In that tiny time frame, it's like you have to find a golden era, a golden like area of time, like a little like whatever to 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 hope and pray that the price doesn't skyrocket. Because imagine you budgeted to buy, you know, things for the week or for the month or whatever, right? And you don't have the money because things keep inflating real time. This is crazy. The impacts of this inflation are impossible to list, but naturally, due to many people no longer being able to afford basic necessities, crowds began to riot, loot food I stores, bet. and violence again ran rampant. This actually, uh, this explanation is the best explanation as to how World War II got started, right? I get it now, because the people were so down bad. I thought I understood how down bad Germany was when World War II happened. I did not have a single clue that it was this bad, this bad. It was the inflation, bro. The inflation was so bad by the minute prices were changing on the spot. That's crazy. That's like the Great Depression on steroids, bro. That is insane insane so of course people were looking for anybody to blame right anybody to blame and it made them susceptible to believing some evil things you know later on but i'll let him explain because maybe there's some more stuff i don't understand yes. like boom however the biggest impact of this inflation is one that wasn't immediately visible because when people lose faith in the economic system they yep. also lose faith in the political absolutely. system absolutely Hyperinflation became a trauma whose influence affected the behavior of Germans of all classes long afterwards. It added to the feeling in the more conservative sections of the population of a world turned upside down, first by defeat, then by revolution, and now by economics. Yep. It destroyed faith in the neutrality of law as a social regulator yep. between debtors and creditors, rich and poor, and undermined notions of the fairness and equity that the law was supposed to maintain. It debased the language of politics already driven to hyperbolic overemphasis by the events of 1918-19. to 19. Yep. It lent new power to stock fantasy images of evil, not just the criminal and the gambler, but also the speculator, and faithfully, the financially manipulative Jew. Damn. In addition to that, with that this sucks. economic crisis, the novelty of the Weimar system had significantly worn off, and the people who were in favor of this new republic had less and less in their arsenal to argue for preserving it. Damn. The next scene we're going to look at is the one that caused the earlier mentioned controversy. Yep, we see this the band scene dressed right as here. inmates of a Nazi concentration camp it's lined bad. up at the gallows, awaiting their public execution. And there are some details worked into this scene that are easy to miss. If we take a closer look at the uniforms of the band members, we can see that the bass player of the band is marked as gay, the person next to him as a Jew, and I the did. lead singer wears a combination supposed to identify political prisoners who are also Jewish. So. I did not notice that at all. Jesus, bro. This is definitely the most intense video I've ever reacted to, ever. I feel like I'm in a history class right now, like a remedial history class that's teaching me everything that I was supposed to learn and didn't learn. This is intense. 
oh, a Jewish socialist, for instance. Judging from the rockets in the background, this scene most likely takes place in the concentration camp Mittelbau Dora, which is the site where the V2 rocket was built. Jesus. The V in V2 standing for Vergeltung or retribution. The weapon in itself wasn't really of any use to the Nazis except for propaganda purposes, and more people actually died during its manufacturing than the rockets killed when reaching their destination. Oh my God. While Rammstein shows this specific image of a public execution clearly set at the V2 manufacturing site is anyone's guess, but it might reference a great injustice connected to this camp specifically. Wow. The manufacturing of the V2 rocket at Mittelbau Dora happened via a company called Mittelbau GmbH, whose general director was a guy named Georg Rickey. Obviously, this wasn't an ordinary company, but one that was deeply built around the exploitation of concentration camp inmates, and thus co-responsible for the over 20,000 deaths connected to the manufacturing of the V2. 20,000 deaths just because they built a rocket. Like the labor that it took to build that rocket caused those deaths. And obviously the... the, the gross mistreatment of the inmates that is terrible e2 rocket after the war was over 19 people were put on trial for what happened at the site one among them the general director of the mittelbau gmbh georg rickai during the trial a former inmate testified that he remembered rickai to be present at a particularly cruel mass execution of 30 inmates in march 1945 Jesus. it wasn't simply a mass execution though but a mass strangulation what? Rikai denied this and also any involvement in implementing the cruel and inhumane work practices at the site something uncovered documents will later prove to be a lie wow. he ended up being acquitted without an explanation given and wow. well go back to where he was living before the trial which what? happened to be the united states he was what He moved to the U.S.? One of many German engineers, technicians, and scientists brought to the U.S. in something called Operation Paperclip. That's what that was, dude. What the fuck, bro? It gets me every... Like Oh my god, that's so sketchy. Here you can see former NSDAP and SS member Kurt Debus, who became the first director of NASA, sitting between John F. Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson. I'd love to tell you that later in his life, Georg Rickey faced justice for his involvement in the death of thousands, but sadly, nobody knows what happened to him after returning to the U.S. Nothing. Nothing happened to him. Literally nothing happened to him. Like, untouched, man. The U.S. is so... Oh my god, it's so messed up. So, and the thing is, they'll never teach that, right? They'll never, it's like a, it's like a cover up. It's like a, um, how do I put this? It's like a subtle cut cover up. Cause it's not like they blatantly covered it up. They like, they kept it subtle. Like they, they, they throw something else in place of what they should have been teaching us to distract us from what actually happened in this event. That's crazy. Probably took on a new identity and, you know, lived his life. Later in the video, the rules are reversed, and we get some cathartic violence with the inmates executing a couple of Nazis via shooting them in the face. Now, before we talk a bit more about this part specifically, let's look at the last scene, where we see the band dressed in 70s clothing, clashing with the police and kidnapping our Germania figure. Pretty unambiguously, a reference to the RAF, the Red Army Faction, which was a left-wing extremist terrorist organization active in West Germany in the 70s. Oh my gosh. The group understood itself as communist, anti-imperialist city guerrillas and was responsible for the death of over 30 people and also causing one of the biggest crises in modern German history, Jesus known as the Christ. German Autumn. The period started with the kidnapping of German industrial leader Hans Martin Schleyer in September 1977, during which three police officers and his driver were killed. Oh, wow. The goal of the terrorists in this case was to negotiate the release of some already arrested members of the organization, but the German government at the time did not budge and was not willing to agree to an exchange. Wow. Tensions increased when about a month later, members of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine hijacked a German airplane, making the same demands among other things and threatening to execute all 86 hostages on board the airplane if denied and i bet you the government's like do it 
Quite the turbulent time for this young republic, and needless to say, the political climate got heated up, with left-wing politicians being accused of harboring terrorist sympathies and a general feeling of unsafety among the population. Yeah, the German yeah. autumn ended when counter-terror special forces stormed the captured airplane, freeing all 86 hostages, the earlier mentioned incarcerated members of the RAF killing themselves when hearing of this development, and Hans Martin Schleyer being executed by his captors. Now, there are a couple of things more one could talk about, like a scene where presumably a witch is burned at the stake with Nazis burning books right next to it. There's a medieval battle scene in which Germania resurrects the fallen knights while a zeppelin passes by, and oh there's God. a scene at the end where Germania gives birth to a bunch of Leonbergers, which is a German dog breed. Oh but God. these are really more open to interpretation than the ones we discussed, so you can comment your own speculation about them. Before we now try to get at what this video and the song lyrics are supposed to say, we'll have to take a look at the politics of the people starring in it. But for the uninitiated, the question in the back of your mind is probably, is Rammstein a Nazi band? And this accusation is something the band has been feeling the sting of pretty much since its founding. It oh. reached its height when the band used footage from Lenny Riefenstahl's Nazi propaganda film about the Summer Olympics in 1936 in their music video for the song Stripped. But even if you're unaware of this controversy, there are several things that might make you question their political leanings, like the rolled R or the hyper-clear pronunciation of the lyrics, things often associated with the very specific speech pattern in Adolf Hitler's speeches. What the hell? I did not notice that. There's also the band logo imitating- Also, I'm learning German, so I'd, I'd, I, there's a lot I don't know. That's insane. The shape of a Balkenkreuz, often used by the German armed forces. Besides these things, the whole video to Deutschland is dripping with national romanticism, which usually wouldn't cause such a scandal depending on its context, but when combined with imagery from the Third Reich, things get murky. Mm -hmm. There's the risk of presenting the pretended superiority of the Nazis as rooted in reality or to make them seem tempting, like with these shots. It looks more like a movie production than a reflection of reality. Or just look at this picture used for the promotion of the song. Mm -hmm. Now the band is kind of notorious for not giving many interviews and almost never speaking about their political leanings, but in an interview with the Rolling Stone, they had this to say when asked about the controversy of using footage from a Riefenstahl film. The intensity of the reaction really surprised us. Back then, we sincerely thought this will find a way of working itself out. We are from the East and grew up as socialists. Back then, we were either punks or goths. We hate Nazis. We come from an entirely different culture. In the past, we fought with these right-wing idiots, and we would do so today. Well, that seems pretty unambiguous. Rammstein says, punch Nazis. There you go. After this controversy, Rammstein sought to clean the table in releasing a song called Links 234, or Left 234, with a marching beat and the lyrics, they want my heart on the right side, but when I look down, it is beating left. If we look beyond what is oh, shown wow. in the video to Deutschland and combine it with the actual lyrics, we can clearly see Rammstein's opposition to nationalism and right-wing views shimmering through. Wow. Probably the best okay. example is their decision to choose a black actress to portray the personification of Germany. Wow. During the Third Reich, German society understood itself as a community defined by its ethnicity as well as a shared past and destiny. Wow, All employees yeah. and officials in the public sector had to own a certificate proving their membership of the Aryan race, sometimes tracing their roots back to the 1700s. Oh my now, god, Now, of course, bro. a document like this isn't handed out anymore since there is no requirement to become a German German that's connected to your skin color. Yeah. Well, is that really true? If it was, there wouldn't even be a question of why Germania is portrayed by a black woman. Mm. Why shouldn't that be the case? You can be black and be as much a German as everyone else. Mm -hmm. Maybe you even caught yourself asking the question of why a black woman is in this music video. Mm -hmm. Looking at the pattern of the I, lyrics. I literally I literally was asking the same thing when I reacted to it for the first time. I'm like, bro, what the heck is going on right now? Like, what? The song starts out with the lead singer saying the first part of a sentence and the choir repeating the first word of what he is about to say next. Here's an example. The lead singer says the word you with the choir repeating you have directly after. And then the lead singer continuing with the sentence have cried a lot. We're always led into the next part of his sentence this way. However, shortly before the first chorus, the choir following what the lead singer says don't lead into anything and seemingly just finish his sentence. With that we get the sentences you can, I know, we are, you all remain. Now Rammstein's lyrics are meant to be ambiguous, but this part specifically combined with their choice to cast a black woman as Germania, which is also on the cover of the single, seems to get at the- Wow, that's insane, bro. Rammstein's interesting in that I think they knew that all their music for the most part is go was gonna be very controversial, but they keep it ambiguous to let the people speculate what 
the meaning is behind their music. You know, they know what their meaning is because they created the music and they were very meticulous with how they chose to portray it to the public. But I feel like the way that they did it, right, the way that they did it was very um, intentional. And I think they're geniuses for that, to be honest. Underlying attitude in Germany of what a German is. Namely that the values you hold, how much you might benefit the country, only comes secondary to what you look like in determining if you are German or not, exactly. at least subconsciously. It's something not really openly said, but I assume a lot of Germans who are also people of color will have encountered this one way or another. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that this attitude is never openly mentioned. For instance, after our last federal election, the speaker of Germany's far-right AFD party on a panel, during which he vehemently defended his party from accusations of racism, complained that he doesn't see enough Germans in our inner cities. How would he know who is a German citizen and who isn't? I guess I don't have to spell it out for you. While the Nazis... Color, rhetoric, color, 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 color. It's long crazy. gone, and Germany on the whole is sensitive to exclusionary language. Blind spots like judging someone by their skin color are ever present here as well as in other European countries. And the world, honestly. The whole world is pretty um, still like that. It's fucked up, but... And by the way, the German government still accepts the Aria Nachweis as an official document to prove German nationality, which is kind of messed up. Oh my God, are you serious? I didn't even realize that. That's... That's pretty messed up. The Nazis seem tempting with these earlier mentioned shots is also undercut by casting a person who the Nazis would have intense disdain for. Exactly. It was like a slap in the face. So I'm pretty sure <laughs> people who who were incredibly conservative that probably watched this video were like, what in the hell? Like, what? Like, what? like they, they were probably turning up five times, bro. That's where those dislikes came from, bro. I'm getting it in now. In a different part of the song, we see the band distancing themselves from nationalism in a manner that is pretty cut and dry compared to their other work. Germany, your love is a curse and a blessing. Germany, my love, I cannot give you. From the right, German anti-nationalism is often framed as a kind of self-hatred due to an underlying guilt left over from the Third Reich. Mm. And despite research showing the opposite to be the case, they seemingly cannot fathom someone viewing their country of origin in a nuanced manner and not strictly positive. If we go beyond the basic understanding of a fifth grader though, the position espoused by Rammstein and parts of the German left is obviously much more thought out than Germany is bad. The truth is that nationalism as a political force is only really powerful if there's an enemy to wield it against. Theoretically, nationalism should be inclusive, you know, regardless of skin color, we are all part of the same nation, upholding the same values, etc. But obviously it doesn't work that way in reality. Nationalism mm. goes hand in hand with the exclusion of others, be that an outside force like a colonialist overlord or a subset of the population not deemed to be truly part of the in-group. At the end of the second verse, we get the lyrics, Germany, Germany above everyone, which is a reference to the first verse of the Deutschland lead, which reads, Germany, Germany above all. Now again, in intention, these lyrics are not meant to show superiority over others. It was written back when the German state didn't exist yet, and this line was supposed to express the long-existing desire for a German nation-state. Wow. The translation more faithful to its intent would be realizing Germany as an idea is more important than anything else. It doesn't have the same ring to it, unfortunately. Rammstein changing the lyrics to Germany above everyone gets much closer to how the first verse of the Deutschland Lied ended up being understood and used. After the takeover of the Nazi regime, they scrapped the second and third verse of the Deutschland Lied, which calls for unity, justice, and freedom, and only kept the first verse and combined it with the Horst Wessel Lied, the anthem of the party. If there's anything to take from Germany's long and multifaceted history, Jesus. it's that right-wing nationalist movements only ever lead their countries into misery and destruction. And of course, any self-espoused nationalist these days will deny this, trying to frame Germany as a historical anomaly, but we can see this trend play out from Italy, Romania, Japan, or in the language used by self-espoused nationalists today. Mm -hmm. At a certain point in time, nationalism was useful since Germany was a country in which just as much religious divisions as class divisions existed. Mm. It's also something to easily overdose on unfortunately Jesus. all that said if this is supposedly the message of this rammstein song why all this controversy what is it about this scene that caused such an outrage well nothing to be honest this scene as part of the video is largely uncontroversial in the broader german media landscape and it makes sense for it to be there because all the quotes i read to you in the beginning were uttered before the actual release of the song oh wow shortly before the song came out the band released a little snippet from the video for promotional purposes showing only the scene from the concentration camp and nothing else it wasn't clear at this point in time that this scene was part of a broader tour through german history 
Which is not to say the band is beyond criticism, though. Releasing just this part without providing further context was... It was intentional, though. That was intentional. They did that so they can generate a hype around the song because everybody's like, what? Why would you post that? That's messed up, blah, blah, blah. Naturally, that's the reaction they were looking for. Obviously a marketing gimmick yep. because the band and label behind them knew the reaction and media storm it would cause. Yep. And while Rammstein is still a successful band, they hadn't released a studio album in over 10 years. So this was an easy way to get their name out there again, yep. which is an effective marketing strategy, I guess. True. But it's also a shitty and above all lazy thing to do. The band has always played with nationalist aesthetics because in large part it's shock rock and in Germany that's obviously what you would do. And of course the band is free to do that. This marketing trick specifically just feels very cheap while not saying anything. True. I think this is the part of the media analysis in which I should talk about what this piece of media means to me personally, but honestly something like national identity is never something I thought about much. But it is without a doubt a topic much more complex in Germany than in other countries considering how recent the Third Reich ended. True. What I feel like a lot of people miss regarding this discussion is that wondering about what Germany is, what values it should uphold or even if it should exist at all, are thoughts that are older than the country itself. True. Germany being involved in a conversation about national identity on the regular might seem like a product of the Second World War and the atrocities committed during it, but honestly different versions of this conversation are seen all throughout Germany's history. Oh my God. Not only the question of if a united Germany should exist, but also how should it exist? One of the reasons the first revolution on German soil failed was because there was so much disagreement on what this new country should even be. Should it be a monarchy or a republic? Should we? It's crazy. After all of this, right? After all of this. So it's very clear to me what that song means now. Very clear. Very, very, very clear. I mean, he spelled it out painted a very vivid picture and I am grateful because I did not understand what I was watching, right? I was very reactionary. Well, it was a reaction video, so it makes sense to what was going on. And I did not know a lot about Germany at the time. I knew about the world, uh, world War II and I knew I had an interest in it um, as a kid because I'm like, well, there's a lot of stuff that was going on at the time that we kind of got taught but we got taught from, of course, our perspective. They're like, oh, yeah, like America won. That's all you need to really know. But it's crazy, bro. It's crazy because like literally like Rammstein knew that the way to promote a song that had all of these elements embodied in it had to be in a negative way. That's actually how marketing works in general. If I want to create a video that's going to get a lot of views on my channel, I have to put a negative connotation kind of behind it to get it pushed to everybody because that's how traditional media works and traditional media combined with modern media what they have in common is negativity sells millions upon billions because people are never going to check in on things that are already solved the things that are okay things that are positive people are always going to check in on um things that have shock value tied to them someone getting uh you know eh, next someone uh you know like someone's someone's life being in danger someone uh you know uh in power that probably shouldn't be um a religious cult that has all these weird beliefs like things that are negative negativity sells millions and billions of dollars bro it's crazy I have a kaiser should austria be included or not then a few decades later makes millions and billions of dollars but yeah. the german nation state is formed but not due to a revolution from below but by military force with serious disagreements about if the kaiser should be a german kaiser or a kaiser of germany a few years later the big questions rile up the country again like should we be a great power or a world power should we be part of the west or not then after the devastating defeat of the First World War, should we really be a republic or isn't that something fundamentally un-German? What about all those Germans now living in lost territories? Takeover of the Third Reich, proclaiming that excluding Austria was a mistake and that they are actually Germans. On top of that, Germany's role in the world is and allegedly always has been the one of a Manichaean struggle against the Jewish race. Hmm. Third Reich is defeated, Germany is split into two, with the western side accusing the east of being nothing but a Soviet satellite state, and the east accusing the west of being the fascist successor of Nazi Germany, and round and round it goes. Hmm. As Rammstein's video shows, there are so many different facets to German history that 100%. it's impossible to make out a single national character. True. Being unsure about national identity and Germany's place in the world is and always has been part of this country. 
one thing that has proven successful in avoiding another catastrophe is being honest with Germany's missteps on the question of what Germany should be and not shying away from the disastrous consequences. As Rammstein does in their video, recalling Germany's past without leaving out the ugly parts is not only necessary for our own sake, but also for Europe, a project we share with others. Mm. Very beautiful. Thank you for watching everyone. I hope you liked this little adventure into media analysis because there might be more to come. But that was beautiful. That was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful breakdown of that song. And for every single person over the years that wanted me to react to this, thank you. I finally got to sit down and react to this with you all. Um, I'll try to have this up as soon as humanly possible so you guys can enjoy it just like I was able to and whatnot. But um, this was very eye-opening and um, I, un I understood a little bit why it had some controversy in it because, of course, prior to the song even releasing, I, I had no idea that the only clip that they showed to, the to everybody in Germany was the concentration camp scene. Obviously, that was enough to get a lot going on considering that Germany hadn't released an album in 10 years. And then the first thing they post is a clip of a concentration camp scene. So then everybody was glued to the screen when the video dropped of what was going on. And it blew up like wildfire. I learned so much. And I'm going to come back to this video and dissect all of the little sections and try to learn as much as I can um, from those different points of history as, I, as possible. Because there was so much that was mentioned that I um, have not dived into before. And I think that would definitely get... Um, allow me to get a big, a better understanding of Germany, um, Germany's journey, pretty much, um, up to this point. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Once again, do not forget uh, to do a huge favor for me and subscribe to the channel. Um, we're w once again trying to hit 500,000 subscribers, and the original link to this video will be in the description down below. As always, um, subscribe to uh, this individual here three arrows is his name um check him out absolutely amazing guy and um that's pretty much it for me let me know what you think in the comments down below and that's it see ya